Hello everyone, I'm Major Jip, and today I'm going to be taking a look at this keyboard. This keyboard came from Walmart. It cost $45 plus tax, and it's not the first keyboard that they've made. Uh, they actually did come out with a mechanical keyboard grounded under their Blackweb brand, which I believe is the one before on, which is what this is. And it's funny, I picked this up to do a review, and then after I bought it, I never saw them again. This was in, like, 2018. Uh, I did use it briefly. It's not a bad keyboard. Um, this uses Altamu Blue switches, and uh, I have a sneaking suspicion this is going to, because as you can see, distributed by Walmart, made in China, of course, that is a mood, um, but this one doesn't have RGB lighting. This is strictly a rainbow assortment of LEDs, and it just does different backlight effects. And seven flash modes, a detachable wrist rest. The wrist rest on this was kind of a pain, because you had to bend clips. Anyway, not talking about that. Though it is, I did find this interesting. It lets you play with the keys on the number pad. Most of them I've seen will either do the WSD keys, which I think uh, Razer started doing, uh, but before that, Razer tended to do an opening on the arrow keys, which uh, I always liked. If you think it's weird, I have a 2016 Black Widow Ultimate keyboard. Uh, it gets weirder. I have two. But anyway, that's a story for another time. Actually, that's I have three of them. One of them I'm doing a project on. Uh, back to this, though. This is supposed to be using blue switches, I believe. We will take a look at that in a minute. Yep, blue mechanical switches, solid aluminum frame. I hope so, uh, because if it's plastic, it'll just flex and feel awful. Uh, programmable RGB backlight keys with radiant lighting effects. Um, I'm assuming you could program that through the software, but who knows? Uh, I don't know who would be the uh, OEM that made this for Walmart. Uh, but it is made exclusively for Walmart, because On is their uh, is their brand. Uh, Anti-ghosting simul for simultaneous keystrokes. Yeah, that's usually not a problem. Um, yeah, programmable software. What's it coming to? Oh, it comes on a CD. Well, I would think they would just tell you to download it these days. Uh, magnetic wrist rest. Yeah, sort of typical stuff. Um, unless you push down all the keys in the package. I mean, all of them might be like that. I'm just thinking this has extra plastic, so you can't push down the keys. And a lot of the higher-end ones do, but eh, it's just packaging. doesn't really matter. Um, let's see here. First things first. Does it, in fact, have blue switches? It has blue switches. They look like the exact same Altemu switches that the other Walmart keyboard has. So that's good. They have a... Uh, known switch that they stick with. And this is the first time of me taking a look at this. <laughs> I like how it's, um, where is it? Uh, copyright 2019 and then they just stuck a sticker. 2020. Whatever, guys. A little piece of foam, at least they give you something to protect it. Mm. Uh, first feeling that it has a little bit of flex to it, but not bad. Uh, because that's going to be the magnetic wrist rest. Just get most of this stuff out, get the box out of the way. Uh, first impressions, it's, it's not bad. Um, this is aluminum, but the bottom is, is, of course, plastic on gaming keyboard and a stock number and serial number. Good enough. Uh, what are the feet like? Um, see, I'm not a big fan of the, um, the keyboard feet that just rely on these little uh, sort of bent pieces of plastic to hold itself together. Um, these do break from time to time. I mean, I know that's complaining about something that's common in a majority of keyboards nowadays, but anyway. Uh, this is a magnetic wrist rest. Throw the bag out. 
Okay. You can mostly pull the keyboard along with it. That, that hooks on pretty good. I'm surprised by that. Uh, there's our software. Our little manual that's gonna tell us how to use the software. The software is better, uh, good enough designed, you won't even need that. And literally a thing saying, put the disc in and plug it in. Okay. Deal with that later. I don't have high hopes. I don't know why. I'm very skeptical. Uh, so it's a pretty typical sort of layout. Um, the space bar is stabilized. I know a lot of cheap keyboards, they'll, uh, they'll cheapen up. And the space bar can be bad. And that's... It's not awful. It's got the uh, the stabilizer at, stabilizers at each end. What about some of these bigger keys? That seems like it's stabilized. Um, it's got yeah, your typical functions: num, num lock, caps lock, scroll lock, and the Windows lock key, which will make it so the Windows keys don't work. Uh, let's just uh, plug it in. I think this computer's on. Well, it is now. Uh, let's just plug it in and see what it does. Okay, that was a, a nice little opening. And it starts in a green mode. <laughs> Very similar to uh, Razer's keyboards. Okay, uh, let me... Uh, <laughs> Pop the disc in and see what the software is like. Okay, then. so we are in the software that's provided for programming this keyboard. And you can do a little bit of everything. You could change the lighting effects. You can program macros. Um, so let's try doing that. Uh, we will set F1. I did make one already. So you do you know, test two. Test two, and we will make F1 type in ASDF and stop, and then OK. Um, the keyboard flashes, so that should be it saving it to the keyboard's memory. So I believe that means if this is then plugged into another computer, it will still react the same, but I'm probably not going to test that, and I could be wrong. Uh, so now, if we do a new text document, open it, and hit F1, types in ASDF. <laughs> and you can kind of screw it up, screw it up, hitting it a bunch of times. Okay, fair enough. Uh, no, don't need to save that. Uh, we'll also take a look at doing lighting effects. Uh, so we'll make the escape key. Full lightning ing. Full lighting. Full lightning. Okay. That could be correct for all I know. Um, okay, so the escape key is orange. That's That's gotta be full lighting. Okay, that's throwing me off. Uh, let's see, Spectrum. And we were going to make it speed through. Ah, eh, probably just the standard. And we can go over here. We can do breathing. And you can even set it to do individual colors as it's doing breathing. So, that's pretty neat. It's a, uh, a full RGB keyboard you could buy at Walmart for $45. Uh, let me uh, go over just a few more things. I want to see if there's a programmable mode without attaching it to the computer. I will be back. Okay, so after taking a look at the software, I set up my own custom pattern. Uh, it's not very useful, but it's just something to show they're fully addressable. You can change each individual key. 
which is what it promised and provided that for $45, which I don't think is that bad. Uh, this is just blue. This is cycling through the spectrum and this is breathing and cycling every time. Uh, but I figured there must be preset moods so you wouldn't have to load up the software because pretty much all keyboards have it. But there is no mention of it on the keyboard itself. There's no secondary options printed on the keys or on the back plate. So I had to resort to looking at the manual, and sure enough, that's where they are. Um, so let me go to the computer, reset to the default settings. So we have a clean slate. So let's go through those. We'll, we'll do function insert. Breathing, okay. And it's cycling through the colors as it's breathing. Uh, function print screen. And I'm assuming you hit that. I guess it's only green if you do the uh, static lighting. Or there's another option. Anyway, uh, function home. That is something. That's incredibly distracting to actually be used, but pretty neat. Function page up. And firework is where it does multiple keys in different colors. That's a pretty neat effect. Uh, function delete. So oh, that's where it just, just trails along. That's that's neat too. I'm uh, I'm very amused by these function end. It's just a wave and it's not reactive. Okay. And function page down is a ripple, so I presume I'm gonna hit this, it's gonna ripple through. Yep, that's a that's a sort of standard. I mean, most of these effects would not be very helpful when you're typing, but they are neat effects. And then I will set it to function print screen is just your regular lighting. And function arrow up is your brightness. It blinks to let you know you're at the highest brightness level. Oh, that's weird. You have to hit it and let go of function. Okay. That's on. And function Windows key is your, your lock and unlock. So now Windows key won't load up Windows at the Windows menu. And now it will. Okay. Anything else that I missed? Pretty much said everything in the manual. I kind of wish they had, uh, let me turn the big light back on. I kind of wish they had those uh, alternate options sort of at least printed on the key so you know, but I mean, I typed with this for a few minutes. It seems to be fine. <laughs> I mean, it feels like a standard keyboard. It doesn't feel cheap. Um, I got those, I mean, I'm really pushing and it's only flexing a little bit. It's not bad. And for $45, fully addressable RGB, it's Atemu Blue Switches. I can't say anything bad, uh, which is surprising because their their previous keyboard I did have a few issues with. Um, but for, for the money, for what you get, I think this is a pretty decent keyboard and I'm I'm not going to use it on my main setup, but I'm probably going to change out one of my uh, Red Dragons for this. Just because the, uh, even though it's a gimmick, the lighting modes are pretty neat. Um, so hopefully that this video was helpful. I tried to go through uh, pretty much everything I could. I'm not going to go and start tearing this thing apart because there's probably a whole lot more to it than most of the other keyboards. Unless someone really wants to see inside of it, like what kind of controller it's using or something. Um, but anyway... Major Jip, signing out.